Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to Sector Spotlight. This is the 29th edition of Sector Spotlight and it will air on Tuesday the 5th of May. I'm recording it on Monday the 4th of May. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm your host for today's show and I'm going to try to guide you through some monthly charts using relative rotation graphs and completed monthly bars for both asset classes and sectors. We will answer one quite well actually two questions in one from the mailbag and because it is the start of the month as usual we'll have a look at the combination of seasonality and rrgs and i can already promise you that there are two matches which give pretty strong ideas and signals for the month of may so stay tuned let's start with the usual overview the overview for the asset classes and sectors this week i am going to combine with our usual look at the monthly bars that were completed last week if we start with the asset classes and i've loaded up a daily rrg for the asset classes and sorted the percentage change column we can see that Real estate was actually the strongest sector with a gain of 1.1%, followed by high yield, 0.9%. And then commodities had a good week, 0.7%, but they're still not very good in my opinion. And then we see that on the lower side, we have the US dollar who lost 1.3% and investment grade corporate bonds down 1%. Um, the benchmark itself, 10 basis points gain almost unchanged. If we, <clears throat> what does that mean if we start looking at the monthly bars? And I'm going to use SPY for stocks. We use the um, ITOT on the RRG for the bigger asset allocation picture, but I'm going to continue to use uh, the SPY chart because that's probably what resonates with most people. And here are the annotations that I have in place for, I don't know, a long time already. And what we see is that after that, a uh, major dip in February and the recovery in March, that the March recovery stalled in that resistance area that I've marked with those two dashed lines that was an old resistance line, started to work as support. Support came back and is now starting to act as resistance again. And the short period that we have uh, already in for the month of May, we see that um, the stock market is not able to push higher, so it seems. So we keep a negative risk off position for stocks. If we move on to government bonds, I'm not going to go over all the monthly charts because that would take way too much time. I'm just going to pick out the most important ones. And here you have GOVD, which is all government bonds, and um, the one for 7 to 10-year treasury bonds, which is a good proxy for a lot of people. You see that that breakout is still valid. Uh, we have inside bar last month. Um, we're, we're holding up. We're not dropping back. So the outlook for government bonds is still pretty strong and they remain uh, on a positive outlook in my investment pyramid. The one in asset class is that I want to highlight this month, this week, is the graph of high yield corporate bonds because they broke out and down, rallied like most of the markets. But as you can see that the close of that previous bar is, is right here. It's right in that resistance area that was formed by that low that was set in December, 2018. Um, that failure to break above and you see that the first hours of trading in the new month are already going lower um, worries me and the uh, if we look at the weekly RRG for the for those asset classes you can see that the, the tail for high yield is already rolling over so the combination of that tail rolling over failure to get back above its uh, previous support level now resistance makes me very careful with high yield. And I've downgraded that in my investment pyramid, which I'll show in a minute. 
um, to an underperformer. So I'm, I'm, I'm going out of high yield. I, I don't trust that high yield corporate bond market anymore. Um, as you can see, government bonds still in the top right hand corner. So they are in line with what we saw on that monthly chart. And the same for uh, ITOT traveling further left in the, um, into the weakening quadrant, which is in line with the failure to break higher. Uh, and in general, from an asset allocation perspective, still a risk off position. If we go to the sectors and we load up, we, let's make that a weekly RRG. So we can have a quick look at what happened last week. I need to pinch that back one day here. And then we have the performance for last week for the sectors. We see that energy was the leading sector with 3.6%, followed by communication services 1.9, materials 1.9, financials 1.5, industrials 1.1. It's interesting. These are all pretty negative, except, except for communication services, uh, ones that are on the left-hand side of the chart. Um, the S&P itself unchanged, down 10 basis points. Uh, utilities minus 4.2, healthcare minus 2.5. So you see a big split um, uh, between the sectors and, and they all sort of even out with a flat S&P 500. If we go to align that with what we see on the monthly charts for stocks, I'm going to go very, very fast because otherwise we will spend way too much time. So materials um, back above, which is actually pretty good and it aligns with the material sector going into the improving quadrant. What I really like is the communication services sector. The RRG is still positioned inside the leading quadrant and you see that it is holding up very well above that support line uh, moving higher. So we, we upgrade communication services to an outperformer. That's one of the sectors that we're out, uh, upgrading to outperform. We go to technology, we see technology still at the right hand side. Uh, let me bring technology here. And you see that that trend is still fully intact. I, I still think that technology is one of the stronger sectors despite this, um, this small hiccup that we've seen, this small rolling over. But that long term trend is still bit pretty good. It's actually above the former resistance line that's now acting as support and, and catching um, that recent, um, well, decline is actually getting above that resistance line again. We go to healthcare, still a very strong sector. Um, no problem there. You see that that uptrend is still intact. We had that wide swing. It's coming off a little bit. There is, there's plenty of room to wiggle and it's also inside the leading quadrant way to the right on the RS ratio. It's the strongest sector that we have in the universe at the moment. Uh, real estate, not very well. If we go to the real estate monthly chart, we see that it has not been able to get back above that resistance level. We broke it. It did not work or not really work as support. We bounced back and we failed to, to break higher. So that's now a definite breakdown of this support level coming off these former highs. Uh, and it's rotating back down into the um, lagging quadrant on the RRG, uh, which makes uh, real estate a sector to avoid for now. Financials way down into the lagging quadrant. And that is completely confirmed by what we see on the price chart. That trend channel was broken. We see that support was broken. And we see that the rally failed to break back above that former support level, now resistance. Uh, and we're, we're sort of rolling over already um, uh, in that market. Um, so please be careful with financial stocks uh, going forward. Industrials, well inside the lagging quadrant. And on the, uh, on the price chart, you see that the bounds did not manage to get back above that support level. Uh, it's failing there, it's rolling over, which completely supports the weak rotation on the RRG chart. And uh, let's quickly go to utilities. Utilities here. 
uh, it's actually inside the channel it's above its support so from that perspective it's okay but if you look at the RRG you will see that the rotation for utilities is negative so I'm gonna uh, it's, it's 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 a strong one in terms of price it's losing relative momentum but it's still on the right hand side so we're gonna um, actually keep it uh, at a positive outlook uh, as a safe haven but please be on the lookout because uh, this one is deteriorating uh, not yet fast enough to to make the call but it is uh, losing momentum and we have staples still well inside the uh, leading quadrant rolling over a little bit but on the price chart you can see that there is no problem at all we're still above that breakout level we're probably um, sort of digesting a little bit of that that recent gains uh, from a relative perspective um, uh, staples is still a pretty good uh, sector to uh, to stay involved in and that was it for the update on the various sectors let's go for a quick break now and we'll be back after 30 seconds For the mailbag today, we have a question that came in from Kenneth and he is referring to a three screen setup that I showed in one of the previous shows where I have the weekly RRG, the daily RRG and then the uh, price chart of the item that we're looking at to, uh, to get a full analysis. And he writes the following. If I put XLI dated, so the industrials ETF, dated April 27 weekly up on the left and then put XLI dated April 27 daily on the right, I see a comparison between the two. But if I toggle the daily RRG forward one day at a time until it reaches May 1st, I believe I now have the same closing date on both at the 27th slash first reading if i stretch the daily tails out 24 days in this case everything is in the same as your main graph below that's referring to to that uh, to that image does that mean the 27th april weekly matches the may 1st daily for my observations on your three chart method now this is a question that pops up uh, every now and then and it's uh, the, the reason is because the wording underneath the RRG graph is a bit confusing but it's best if I show you on the chart itself I have loaded up two RRGs for US sectors on the left hand side the weekly and on the right hand side the daily and they both end or are dated April 27 I should say because this is where the confusion comes in as you can see on both sides, the industrials ETF is highlighted. Uh, this is April 27, the weekly. And you, if, you, if I toggle that, you can see that that jumps per week. And on the daily, I have five trading days ending April 27. And I can toggle that forward to May 1st. And... On the daily, it's actually, it's correct, because this is five trading days ending May 1st. This is the RRG on a daily basis, and the last observation is May 1st. That's totally fine. Now, on the left-hand side, you see the weekly, and the reason why that, even if you look at it, at this weekly RRG, on May 1st, it will still show you five weeks ending April 27th. Um, the reason for that is that it has to do with the convention of dating weekly bars. Um, obviously, you can, you can put the date for a weekly bar at the beginning or at the end of the week. 
And there is no right or wrong. There is no generally accepted um, syntax for that. So Stock Charts has chosen to use the start of the week. If we say five weeks starting April 27, it, it almost sounds as if it is from April 27 onward. And that's not the case either. So until I come up with a better wording or a better phrase, what you should bear in mind is that when it says in, in weekly ending April 27, it means the week beginning April 27. So the tail is ending in the week beginning April 27. For the dailies, there's obviously no problem because that just, oh, oops, wrong screen. That, that still, you know, counts day to day, day to day. Um, this question ties in with another question that came in with regard to um, whether RRGs are real time. Um, they are, they are and they're not. Like they're not like real time where you can have intraday time, time frames. So hourly, uh, 10 minutes, we're, we're working on that. It, it will come, I am 100% sure. Just don't know when yet. And it might be only available in the, uh, in, in the new ACP. Um, that's still part of the discussion. Um, but we will get intraday RRGs on stockcharts.com. The RRGs that we currently have, the dailies and the weeklies, are actually let's say semi real time they use the last traded price so if you go on a daily rrg the prices will be updated so you see that there is always already a price for may 4th where it's um an hour into the trading session for today on on may 4th so this was last friday that is now fixed and now this one here, this observation is fluid until today's closing price. Um, and it will, it will update. So if you refresh the RRG, it will use the last traded price. Now, obviously, because it's a daily RRG, you will not see a massive, unless there is a massive change in price, you will not see big changes, but it is using the last price. Same goes for the weekly RRG. It will use the last price. However, it will use the last price to create the weekly observation. So for this XLY here, this is the position on Friday, last Friday's close. And now we have one hour worth of trading onto, that onto this graph. And it will, so this one here, the, the previous observation is last Friday's close. That's this last node here will be fluid until we reach this Friday's closing price. So the dailies will fix at each day's close. The weekly will fix at the Friday close. So this will, you know, go back and forth, etc. But again, because this is a weekly one, it will not change that much, but it is using the last traded price from that day all the way through the rest of the week until it reaches the Friday's close. I hope that this answers basically two questions, one with regard to the alignment of the dates and one with the availability of real-time data or semi-real-time data and how RRGs are updated. At the beginning of the month, uh, or let's say when the month changes, I always like to look at the seasonality for the various sectors. And what I like to do is I like to combine the seasonal pattern with what is actually happening on the RRG and see if that can either give me a confirmation of moves or sends a signal to maybe not trust a certain move or a certain rotation. Those of you who've seen the show before know that I have set up a spreadsheet that visualizes that seasonality for all those sectors in a 3D format. If you didn't request that spreadsheet, yes, it's available. Just simply drop me an email at juliusdk at stockcharts.com and I'll be happy to share that sheet with you. The seasonality for sectors. Here is the visualization as you know it. Let me blow this up a little bit. 
Um, we're looking for the month of May, that's the month to come. And there are a few interesting observations. If we zoom in on that particular month, we see that there are a few very strong and a few very weak ones. And I'm looking for stuff that is 70% or higher or 30% 30, 30 or lower, 40% or lower. If we look at XLB, we see that materials underperform, uh, sorry, I should say outperforms the S&P 500 um, in 30% of the time. That means that it underperforms the S&P 500 70% of the time. Now that's a number that I like to see and you see that there is a, there's a very low bar here. Communication services on the other hand is outperforming the S&P 500 75% of the time. Now I gotta make a little caveat here because XLC and XLRE have um, relatively short periods of history to calculate the seasonality. So I, I take them with a grain of salt, but 75% is a very decent number. So at least I wanna take a look at how it behaves on the RRG. Energy, XLE, um, outperforms only 40%, so it underperforms 60% of the time. And XLF, financials, um, underperforms 65% of the observations. Technology outperforms 65% of the time. Now, let's have a look at where they are on the RRG. So on the left hand side you have the seasonality. So the seasonal patterns calculated over a 20 year uh, time span. And we're now going to what's happening in the real world. And we had XLB. And what we see is that materials on the RRG is actually not too bad. It's, it's improving and it's going in the right direction. And the chart itself doesn't look too bad at all either. So these two are contradicting. Um, it looks pretty good in real life. Seasonals are not very supportive. So this combination would make me a little bit reluctant to go all out in materials, despite the fact that it all looks pretty good. It's just like, it's a, it's a secondary uh, opinion, a second opinion, something you know, in the back of your mind um, it says it looks pretty good, but seasonal, mm, not too well. If we look at communication services, we see a different picture in terms of that the seasonal is, is damn good. It's, it's the best of the whole, the whole set. So, so uh, based on seasonality, communication services is expected to, best, to be the best, or it has the highest, I should say, has the highest um, odds of outperforming the S&P 500. If we look at the rotation of communication services on the RRG, we see that it had a very short tail, but it now starts to accelerate into the leading quadrant, which is a positive. So the RRG, the development on the RRG and the seasonal pattern are uh, conforming each other. So they're, so they're in sync, which gives a little extra boost if we see something good in communication services. Um, which is doing pretty well on the RRG and on the chart itself as well. If we go to energy, that's, um, it's, I, I would say that is a little bit doubtful because it is a, it's, it's, it's still way to the left on the RRG, which makes it the weakest sector in the, in the universe. But it's been picking up a little bit of momentum. Um, the seasonal pattern suggests that energy will will stall and fail and start to move down again. Uh, maybe we should have a look at the, the daily rotation for energy, see if we can see anything there. Well, that's not very helpful either. We see that energy is actually uh, doing pretty well on the dailies. So this is a mixed bag. Um, what this means is that I would not go all out short in energy anymore. It's, I still remain very, very cautious about the energy sector as a whole because of the position on the weekly RRG. Um, the seasonal pattern is not supportive, but the short term is actually improving for the energy sector. Um, so a mixed bag in doubt here. Financials. 
very weak seasonal and a very weak rotational pattern. So here again we have a match. Financials are very weak on the RRG and they're very weak from a seasonal point of view. So this means that well, this is screaming basically to avoid the financial sector uh, in the month of May going forward. And then finally, we have technology XLK, which is supported by um, the seasonal pattern, 65%. It's not as strong as I'd like. I'd like to see it 70 or higher. But um, if we look at the uh, rotation here, we see, as we know, that technology has been rolling over. It's still a very strong sector. If you look at the position on the RS ratio axis, uh, technology is still uh, pretty strong. One of the stronger sectors for sure. And let's see what happens on the daily RRG for technology. Well, it's inside improving and it's already starting to, uh, to crawl back up into leading. So, well, I'd say... Either it's in doubt or, or give technology the benefit of the doubt, given, given the strength of the, uh, of the sector. Uh, although the, the, the rollover of relative momentum that we've seen uh, over the last couple of weeks, and you see the daily pattern here that is causing that rolling over on the weekly RRG, and you see that it has now started to improve and move into that uh, 0 to 90 degree RRG heading. So... Um, slightly upward bias for technology based on a supportive uh, seasonal pattern for the month. What does it mean what we can expect uh, based on these seasonals? Uh, here are the average percentage relative returns versus the S&P 500 for the month of May. And if we zoom in on the sectors that we just discussed, uh, materials is expected to underperform the S&P by minus 0.2 percent that was the one that we were a little bit in doubt about communication services is the strongest expected outperformance 1.1 percent combine that with a positive tail and i think this is something to keep an eye on energy is expected to underperform the s p 500 by 10 basis points this was the one that we were in doubt it's picking up a little bit of momentum so like unchanged nothing really major going on there um, and then financials is underperforming or expected underperformance minus 0.2%. So we do have the seasonal and the rotational pattern in sync. Seasonals suggest that it's not going to be massive, but it is expecting an underperformance. And then the, the final one, technology, they are in sync. And it's not, again, not expecting a massive outperformance, but a slight outperformance. So here you have the combination of seasonal expectations and actual rotations combined. And I would say that the strongest signals are coming from communication services in a positive way and in financials in a negative way. Uh, we keep an eye on this. Again, if you like the spreadsheet, drop me an email and I'll send it over to you. And this was Sector Spotlight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions, feedback or suggestions, please don't hesitate and send me an email. Or if you watch this episode on the YouTube channel, don't hesitate and put your discussions and comments in the box below. And don't forget to like the video. Meanwhile, if you want to stay up to date with relative rotation and relative strength, please go to the RRG blog on stockcharts.com and subscribe using the link below each article. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern, and I hope to see you next week. Stay safe for now. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with stockcharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.